In this video, I'm going to show you everything about components on Next.js 13, and I'm going to talk about how we use component, how to architecture the folder component, and stay until the end, because I'm going to show you how to pass all the props at once, from parents to children, instead of creating several props all the time. All right, so I got my uh, Next.js application running. I got one page. I got some pages here. And here on at the source folder, I got my app folder where I got all my pages, okay? We saw in a previous video that we have to create folders, then pages, or we can create page.tsx directly to inside the folders to create a page, okay? But now, this is the question. Now, with this new Next.js 13 um, architecture, how are we going to do to store our components? Well, it's really easy. What we're going to do, we are going to create a new folder into the source folder, right, on top of app called components. And in this folder, we are going to store all our TSX files, all our folders that are going to have our components, right? So what I'm going to do at first is that I'm going to create just a new file. And let's say that this new file will be called header.tsx. So I'm going to call here a header.tsx. And first, I'm going to use the client that we've got in here. And I'm going to create a specific uh, component here that is going to be export default, let's say, and it's going to be function header. And there we go. And in here, I'm going to return what? I can return a header. And this is my header. All right. So we've got our component. And here we see that it's clearly um, TypeScript GSX that we are writing. It's exactly the same type of code as a page. The main difference is that here, header will never appear anywhere if I don't import it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back at the root of my app folder. And here on the top, I'm going to type import header. And here what I can do is if I have my alias at component slash and here it's going to be header. There we go. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that in here, main page of my application, and I'm going to call my component header here on the top. So if I type header in here and I come back, there we go. We've got our header just here on the top of my page home. Okay, so this is how you create component. Okay, here I put header, but actually I could have put, for instance, random name, okay, because here is just the import inside the page where I am. I'm still importing the header, okay? This is a basic to know. I could put the name I want. Here I put random name, and I, as long as I got the right path to the component that I want, I can rename my component. So here I just put header. So there we go. So we've got this component. So of course, the components are piece of UI that are reusable everywhere, and we can put logic into it, or we can just put some design and we inject the data directly to it. All right, so here I created a component header, but actually this component header will be more complicated than this, okay? Let's say that at first inside I will have a div with a logo, and after that I would like to have a menu. Okay, so if I come back here, we see that I got my logo, my menu. So for now, there is no design, but it's okay. We're going to deal with that later. Let's say that I would like that logo and menu would be another component, uh, actually a, a component logo and a component, component menu. Well, what I can do is create a new file. That's the first thing that we can do. Create a new file logo. Okay, and I can just copy paste this and put here instead of this a div with my logo, and I can call it logo. Uh, by the way, the name here doesn't matter that much, except for the search of your uh, VS code. And I could do exactly the same for the menu. So if I put the menu here, I can change it and put the menu. I can definitely import a component into another component. There's no problem with that. So here I can go up here and I can say import logo and Again, I can go on components and get my logo component. And instead of having this logo, I would have my logo here. And I can do exactly the same with the menu. So if I do this, I can come back in here and I can have my logo and my menu self-closed. And it gives exactly the same thing. Right, amazing. So this is the first kind of option we would like to have. However, let's say that I would like to have like some 
um, header item. Okay, here, what I would do is to create a new file called header item.tsx. However, there's a moment here, I will have a lot of components, a very big list, because this is just the beginning. So instead of doing this, what I could have done is to create a folder, and this folder would be called header. And inside this header, so I'm going to close everything, and we're just going to look at the uh, header itself, I could have an index.tsx. And here, this index.tsx would be understood like a header itself. So basically, this one here, this header we got, header.tsx, should go into this index.tsx. So I'm going to copy paste this here and I'm going to remove this header that we've got down there and I'm going to go, come back and here it's not going to change anything. I'm not going to have any problem. So if I update, there we go. We've got the logo, the header item and the menu and there we go. We've got everything. So now let's say that I know the logo and the menu would be only on the header for now. So what I can do is just to grab all of them into here my header. Uh, folder. And suddenly we see that I got an alert from VS Code that's telling me that I have to update the import everywhere logo is and everywhere menu is because I'm changing the path. So if I say yes in here and I come back to my page.tsx, sorry, to my header.tsx here, we see here that menu has, doesn't got the right path because now menu is inside the header folder and we've got this. Okay, so let's say that now I'm going to create another folder like profile. This is more clear. When I read my components folder here, I open my source. When I read my components folder, I can go deep down into every folder that contains every file. This is a better architecture than having all the files at first at the first level. This was the first lesson. The first lesson is that try not to overload your component folder, otherwise you will lose visibility. Try to create folders with business logic or item logic, whatever, where you store all your files. It will be better for your future work. All right, the second thing is that you got to be aware that um, uh, component might, and especially business component, might have their own scope, right? So if you are declaring some data into the header, Everywhere you are going to import the header, there will be the data of this header, right? So let's give an example. Let's say that here I would have a const that will be name and here it will be Guillaume, okay? And if I call this uh, constant inside my component by using uh, brackets here and I put name, okay? And I come back. Here I get Guillaume into my header. But let's say that you want to call this header somewhere else. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to go uh, to my page. I got my header on the top. Let's say that we're going to put it also on the bottom. Here I would have the variable of my header component, right? I would inherit it from name. And if I change here the name for Kevin, for instance, it's going to change it everywhere into my application. So to avoid this and to just, for instance, catch this name, what we use is to pass data to components. That's what we call props, right? We pass data through props. Okay, so let me give you an example. Here on my page, let's say that I have, for instance, let's say that I have my name, which is here, which is Guillaume. All right, so let's say that here I want to pass this name to header. So what I can do is to type uh, a name and here I put brackets and I put name. And we see that I got a problem. The problem is that here name is not recognized on the header because I have to declare. So I'm going to come back to my header, dot, uh, uh, my header index.tsx. I got to declare name as a props here. So now that I am on TypeScript, I got to declare actually my props. So let's say that here I would have a props and this is where I'm going to catch the props and I could type any for instance. So now I got my props that are here and I have passed my name in here. So what I can do is coming back in here and instead of having name because name doesn't mean anything in here, what I can type is props.name. Okay, what's going to happen is that it's going to get the data directly from my header. So if I come back, in here, we see that I got Guillaume, okay? So that's the thing, but 
It's cool, but let's say that instead of having name here, I'm just going to put name here, I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to go down and take back the example of before. If I put Kevin on the bottom and Guillaume on the top, when I come back, I got Guillaume, okay, I got Guillaume on the top and I got Kevin on the bottom as a footer. So as we see here, we can pass props directly here through our components and catching them. Of course, later we would declare here as, um, uh, as a type, for instance, my props. And inside, in here, we're going to declare every, everything we want. Of course, if you want to catch name directly, what you can do is to deconstruct here and have name and put any or the future props type that you are going to declare. So if you do that here, you need to remove props and you get your name. So I'm going to come back to props because I want to explain you now how we can pass all the props directly from a children, okay, from a children, uh, from uh, parents to children, sorry. Okay, so here I got a uh, header name Guillaume, and let's say I'm going to remove this, and I'm going probably to clean a little bit, okay, my um, my thing. So I got Guillaume, logo, menu, Kevin, logo, menu. We don't see uh, a, a lot why we would do that, but anyway. So I got here a name, then I got an age. Let's say that it's going to be 35, and then here it's going to be here age, 24 and let's say that we want to pass something else is man true and here we're going to put is man true also for kevin so i'm going to do this there we go so we've got the header and we've got all these props so here if i'm just hiding those two components that i got in here what i would do it's exactly the same age and here is man so if i come back we see that i got a guillaume 35 i don't got uh, uh, my props is men, so I can put is a man or is a woman. Okay, let's say we're going to do that. So is a man or is a woman. And there we go. So it's just like this. There we go. So the thing is that let's say that we want to remove this. Okay, and we would like to pass the props to the menu. Okay, so here, as you see, I, I need to import again logo and menu. But how would I do this? Well, the first reflex would be to do exactly the same, okay? What you could do is to deconstruct here and put the name, the age, okay? And is men, and here we could put any, and then what we, what we would do, so let's remove logo for this example, we could do this, okay? That's what you would do. So if I go to my menu, I can do exactly the same, and instead what I can do is here to put props.name, then props.age, then props is men. Then after, of course, you would pass name, age, is men. So we got three levels. We got one level with the home, then we've got a level with the menu, and then we've got the menu at the end. And when we come back, we've got this. But if every time I have to pass all my props like this, it would be complicated, right? It would be touchy because if I got a lot of props at the end, I will have a lot of code like this, and this is unreadable, guys. So what we would do instead is that Instead of having this deconstruct, I would have props in here. And let's say that I would pass directly my props this way. Okay? So now instead of deconstructing everything, okay, I would pass my props this way directly to the menu. And let's see if there is a difference. And there is no difference. Okay? So now we see that I can catch all my props like this. So this is typically the kind of errors most of developers do. They pass several props and then after that they deconstruct to pass again the props to several components and at the end it's a real mess, okay? Sometimes it's useful to deconstruct and pass just some props and not everything, but if you can pass all the props at once, it's the best solution. Last thing that I want to show you it's that you can pass also children to your components. Let me give you an example. Let's say that here on my header, instead of self-closing the header this way, I want to pass a message, a message from home, okay? So I can do that inside. I can wrap inside the header all the content that I want. And to catch it in here, what I should do is just to call props.children. Exactly, exactly like what you have in the layout. Remember in the layout, we saw these children here. 
that we can irritate. And if I come back, I got my props or children. So if I come back, I see that I got my message from home. So this is very useful also to know that you can pass element inside your uh, component this way. But be safe here, this element inside the component is wrapped into the context, into the scope of home in here. So you got to be safe with that. Of course, if you want to, you can also pass, let's say I want to pass my logo. I can pass my logo and here when I come back, I got my logo in here directly, okay? So I use props.children to pass some data at a certain slot. Thanks for watching this quick look at components. This is just the beginning. All along this course, probably I'm going to show you other tips on how to use and how to manage the component inside your Next.js application. You got to know that it's also better to always start with pages than using, reusing the components as much as you can because you want to avoid to have too many components. So the best thing is to be really prepared when you create an Next.js project and like for every front-end project, actually, you need to work first on the components that you will need to separate with the design, with the functionality, to determine which components are going to be design components and which components are going to be business components.